and welcome back. Today's top stories are left and right brain dominance and, and hypnosis. Is it a trustworthy source for memory retrieval? I'm Elizabeth Porco. And my name is Dimitri. Welcome back to PC Newscast. We're here covering the newest question on campus, hypnosis. Is it as promising as the hype makes it out to be? Some psychologists suggest that hypnosis can be used in retrieving long and forgotten memories or traumatic repressed memories. Today we are going to shine some light on this myth and explore why it is false. With us we have our reporter Amy interviewing a local student with the same question. Hi, my name is Amy Ramos and I'm reporting live for the newscast. I'm here at Pacific Union College in England, California and I'm here to get the public opinion on hypnosis. Uh, what's your name? Oh, my name is Andrea. Andrea, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, and what is your major? My major is psychology. Psychology, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything specific that you like to study about psychology? I'd like to learn more about hypnosis. Hypnosis, mm -hmm. oh, that's great because I'm actually here to ask you some questions about hypnosis. <laughs> what a coincidence! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so um, what do you know about hypnosis? What have you heard? Um, I've heard that you can actually recall um, memories with hypnosis. Really? Yeah. So have you seen any of those TV shows where they're like in the courtroom and there's uh, someone, one of the witnesses has um, remembered some of his memories because of hypnosis? Yeah, I have. And not only in TV shows, but in actual real like past um, courtrooms where eyewitnesses undergo um, through hypnosis and they actually managed to retrieve those suppressed memories that they had and um, they can actually remember uh, those criminals that were actually in the crime scene. So I think that's very useful, especially when trying to get all those bad guys out in the streets. <laughs> yeah. So have you done any research on hypnosis? Yeah, I have. Um, I read all about um, actual early psychologists like Sigmund Freud and Pierre Jeanette, I believe, and they actually use these techniques to um, help other people remember those um, memories that they need to retrieve in order, you know, to go on with their lives. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Now back to you guys at the studio. Bye. Thank you, Amy. We were also able to contact a local psychologist who can give us further insight on the rumor and why it is not true. Hi, today we have with us here forensic psychologist Kieran Moore here to tell us a little bit more about hypnosis. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, I'm honored to be here. So what evidence and information have you brought for us today? Like you said, I will be addressing the topic of hypnosis. Many people think that hypnosis is a very effective way to pull forgotten memories out, but contrary to popular belief, hypnosis is not able to retrieve accurate memories. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Because I know I've seen a lot of television shows where they show, uh, like in courthouses, where they're pulling out suppressed memories from the witnesses through hypnosis. Um, yeah, you're not alone in that thought. Hypnosis is what seems to be a very convincing problem-solving method. Um, it seems to provide all the answers for memory retrieval. The only problem is that it, um, the real patients that go under, undergo hypnosis wake up and they are more likely to remember false memories, which increases the witness's confidence in both accurate and inaccurate memories, which is called memory hardening. So how do you know that these memories are false? Well, for example, age-regressed subjects who are undergoing hypnosis may be very convincing in their display of what they were experiencing and remembering, and they might very well believe that they can remember now. But it is, it is shown in Michael Nash's study in 1987, adults that have been age-regressed to childhood do not show any indication of early development. Their vocabulary, brainwaves, and cognitive tasks are those of an adult. Wow, I had no idea that someone's beliefs and knowledge could control how they respond to hypnosis. Yeah, and to add on to that, um, there was a group therapy session that was televised in 1995, and it showed a woman that was age-regressed, and she demonstrated a very realistic emotional 
and physical example of what it was like being stuck in her mother's fallopian tubes. Wow, that's very interesting. And do you have any more interesting information about hypnosis? Yes, I want to share um, that hypnosis can be useful and effective if used in the right context. So could you share what the right and wrong uses of hypnosis would be? Yeah, I would suggest that um, to not have hypnosis performed on you or if you are a witness um, doing it to reveal a missing piece from a crime. Hypnosis is not the solution for that problem because it can foster false memories. And with those memories come false accusations. So what would be some cases where you would use hypnosis? Uh, the case where you would want to use hypnosis is in treating pain, medical conditions, and habit disorders. There is something very about hypnosis um, that provides relaxation and peace, and it is very useful for um, the cases above. Wow, you completely changed my view on hypnosis. Well, it was a pleasure having you here. And Up next, we are going to have Larry Mays, a victim of false accusations. Hi, yeah, uh, thank you. So, um, yeah, like, I was just hanging out with my family one day, and, uh, I don't know, like, I was at a restaurant, and the, the cops came in for a raid, so it was like, oh cool, dinner and a show, you know? A cop raid, I mean, who doesn't want to see that while they're, while they're eating dinner? Um, but I, I found it kind of weird when they started, uh, I don't know, heading towards me. Um, that, that got a little awkward at first. Uh, you know, but, um, I don't know. They, I remember just looking over to my wife and then looking back at the police and, uh, they were like, hey you, you're under arrest for rape and murder. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, I think you have the wrong person. They're like, no, the victim uh, properly identified you, so uh, you're going to have to come with us. So they took me out of the restaurant, which, you know, I was like, uh, look, look guys, you got the wrong person. It's not me. But... Uh, you know, they, apparently the eyewitness, like, got hypnotized or something, I don't, I don't know, and, like, I guess was convinced that I did it, even though we never met, I don't even know the person, well, I guess I know them now, but didn't before this, and it's just like, come on, if... I understand that that's rough, you know, but, you know, be, be a little more careful with identifying. It's, if, I were, if I were to say anything to her, be more careful when identifying the wrong person. I got 50 years to life. Thank goodness for DNA testing, or else I'd still be in there. Thank you, Amy, for this insightful interview. And thank you, Dr. Moore, for taking the time off to talk with us. Hopefully this has given more insight to the viewers to see that this claim is truly false. And stay tuned for more news and myth-busting with PUC Newscast.